SFO on the center section of my tier tray. Anyway, I'm having major problems. I, this is the third time to start. Um, I've been 20 minutes in, and it keeps telling me that I don't have enough space, so I went and deleted a bunch of podcasts that I had downloaded to see if that would help, and it would do like two seconds and then turn off, but I didn't notice that till I was like 10 minutes in again. So anyway, we're back. Um, podcasts, while we're talking about them, I have realized that I love to stitch while I'm listening to podcasts because I don't have to look up and see what's going on. Um, the story doesn't depend on me being able to see things going on, so I can just stitch and not worry about. I'll be I'll be watching like a show with my husband or something, and I'll say, wait, wait, what happened? And they just weren't even watching. No one is stitching. That's the reason we watch TV, right? So we can stitch. Um, Anyway, we, I'm sorry, I have been, uh, we've been super busy. He's had a lot of sicknesses this year. We've had the flu shot, but we still have the flu. Um, we've had the strep twice. Turns out my husband, the first time we all had it, my husband was like, well, I have a scratchy throat, but I, it, I'm positive it's not strep. And so when we all were on round two of strep, like two weeks later, I made him get tested. He had strep. Um, Usually he's kind of a man flu kind of guy, like he thinks he could possibly be getting something and it's like, I need to call his mom and have him say his last goodbyes. But I don't know what it was, but for whatever reason, he was like, I'm fine, I'm not going to the doctor. And then we all kept getting stress. Um, anyway, so I feel kind of frazzled because I've started this so many times and been so far into it each time. Um, my kindergartner is home from school. I had to go, I just went and got him. We only have half day kindergarten here. My husband should be walking in any minute. He only works about two miles away, so he comes home for lunch. Um, he comes home for lunch and he's picking up my other daughter from preschool on her way home. Um, or not on her way home, on his way home. Okay. Um, oh, I was going to tell you about one of the podcasts that I've been listening to. I've never listened to podcasts until October. And um, our local station, uh, our, it's our NBC affiliate, it's called KSL, they just um, started this podcast about this cold case that um, started in 2009. And um, this lady, Susan Powell, she's late 20s, married, two kids. And she just went missing one day. And it was quite clear that her husband did something to her. But they never had enough evidence to convict him, and the case has gone cold. Um, so this podcast is kind of about, it's about the disappearance and then kind of about the creepy guy that her husband is, was. He's actually passed away now. Um, actually, well, he ended up killing himself. And um, he, uh, anyway, about the creepy family he was from, and it's just really fascinating, and it's a series, so it's like an hour each week. Um, and they just finished episode 16, and I can tell that they're almost to the end, because a week or two ago was when he uh, blew up his house with him in it. So anyway, uh, her name's Susan Powell. I don't remember if I said that. I don't know what I said and what I haven't. Um, and, but anyway, I had never listened to podcasts until I started this, I, and um, <laughs> we, but now I'm totally into them, and so I, if you have any great true crime po podcasts, uh, I'd love to hear it. Uh, fairly clean, not, the Susan Powell one, um, there's not swearing in it, um, it does uh, talk about some of the weirdo things that the husband was doing, which are not, um, it, it's not rated G. It doesn't swear, but it, it talks about them. It doesn't go into detail, but it, it does talk about some very strange things. Uh, anyway, so if you have some that are, are fairly clean, uh, that are fascinating, that you love, uh, let me know because I am super interested now. Okay, I don't have very much time. Um, I wanted to show you my Stitch 9 challenge pieces. If you follow Farm Girl Michelle, you know that she started the Stitch 9 challenge. And I only had nine whips, but I want to get them finished 
by the end of the year and be down so that I can only have two or three whips going at a time because I get, um, I don't like to have more because I feel like I don't, I need to just get into them. If I have a lot going and work on a different one each day, then I don't get in the mood to go back to the other ones or whatever, but it stresses me out to have them hanging over my head. So my kindergarten is right here playing. So you want to say hi? Hi. <laughs> Uh, makes me nervous to have his face on camera, but he's right here, so that's what you may hear. Oh, put that back in, please. I can't remember if I told you guys my tripod is not, the little clip's gone, and so my camera is on my little chair chair that he's playing with his the thing out here. Don't do that on the table because I don't want it to scratch the table. Thank you. Okay, this is my first one. This is American Sampler by Plum Street, and so I have got, I've got, um, I only had this little top part done when I started this challenge, but it's one that I've been wanting to get done. Um, this is what it'll look like when it's finished. Um, so I've got this part done over here, this top part, um, and then some up here on um, the top of the house I've got done. So I started doing the bricks, and it was taking me forever. I'll weasel it down in. Uh, we're about to get invaded. Um, and I, um, sorry, I cannot concentrate with them in here. So they, uh, um, I couldn't, I, it's been nice to have to work on it and feel like I'm making progress. The brick made me a little bit crazy, so I'm starting now to do page by page. Hi. Hi. <laughs> so that's the first one. Um, the second one is is Witch Witch and it's by Lottie Da. And this is the what I have done. So I'm probably a little more than halfway. Um, it's kind of it's nice to not have to do the um, to switch out colors. But it's kind of, if you can see the little lace stuff here, I have to, like, very carefully looking at the chart to make sure that I'm doing it right all the time. Um, but it's kind of fun, and it's different than my other things, so I, I like it. Um, my husband's taking the kids upstairs. They'll be back, I'm sure. So we'll be fast. So my next one is this is Plum Street Heritage Sampler. And that is all I have done. I started this on Christmas night, um, and I didn't work very much on it. I ended up buying an op light with a, a magnifier so that I can do all of this one over one. There's quite a bit in the whole thing. And um, one over one, it doesn't bother me until it gets like it's a solid thing like this. Cause I kind of feel like I'm overlapping. I ended up doing just a tenth stitch. I don't know how well you can tell. A tenth stitch to fill in and then do the actual cross stitch on the letters. Um, but it's so tight that you can't really tell, and I felt like it was looking bulky with the with a solid one over one. Um, let me show you. This is the, this is the chart. Okay. Um, then, and I don't know what fabric that is besides that it's 32 count. It was just one that I had and it was humongous, so I used it. Um, the next one, uh, this I love. This is With Thy Needle, and it's this Thankful, Grateful, and Blessed. And I started this right after Halloween. I was hoping to get it done for Thanksgiving, and then I was really, I had gone to Shepherd's Bush, and they had all their Christmas stuff out, and I was so in the mood for Christmas. And so this is abandoned. So now is the time to start it again, right? This is a humongous piece. It's way too big. Um, this is Vintage Country Mocha. And anyway, I really like it. I did a lot of my fall pieces on this same fabric because it just looks fallish to me. Anyway, so I'm probably about halfway done with the house. And I think the rest of the chart will go faster once I, I get the house done. Um, then I've got Turkey Bay. And this one I worked on for two days straight and haven't touched it since, back in October. So this is what I've got done. 
I'm kind of hoping for mania this year instead of starting new things. I want to finish four, so one a week. Um, that's kind of my goal. So we'll see how that we'll see how that goes. It may change because that's like a month and a half, two months away. So because I yeah I have a rough time sticking to my plans, which is why I need less wits. Um, this is Harvest Sampler. And a lot of these things I probably have not worked on since I last made a video, which was in October. So, this is what I've got done on the Harvest Sampler. Um, this one, this is that Vintage Country Mocha again. It says it's 36, and for some reason in 36 it seems so small. Way smaller than my other, um, my American Sampler that is also 36. It's like, it's a little bit tight, tightly woven, I guess. And so I haven't worked on this as much because I keep thinking, oh, it's hard to stick on. But I, w I will get it done. Um, then I've al I finished a couple of my my stitch nines. Um, one of them was, this is Ghoul Tidings by Plum Street. And I, I know that this is 32 count. I don't know what this fabric is. I really, really have loved it though because let's see if I can. I you can't really tell. There's kind of like a, a grayish green, but then there's a little bit of purple mottling mo in it. And so you can't, I don't think it shows up very well. But I I love this fabric. It was really fun. But again, this is a looser weave, kind of like the putty. So it makes me think maybe it's just weak fabric because that way it's a little bit stiff. So anyway. Wool Tiding by Plum Street, and uh, so I changed some of the colors. This Ghoul Tiding I did in Great Arbor, um, and then her dress I did in Great Arbor. They, it's kind of softer colors, the, the call for ones, and um, so with a lot of the black I did as that color, and then I also darkened up my oranges. I can't remember what all it called for, but they were just a little too bright for me for Halloween, so I darkened them up a little bit. Um, and I just used what I have, so I don't really know what it was. Um, and then the, I also finished the first one. This is a Brenda Gervais. Um, what is this called? Oh, Summer Schoolhouse. And I did not do it over one uh, because that sounded kind of like torture. And I know some people love it, and it looks great, but I also like mine to be a little bit bigger. So this is on 32 count. But I thought, if I'm putting all that work in, I don't want this little tiny thing. So, um, anyway, this is one of my Stitch 9 challenges, but the whole series is not my Stitch 9 challenge. It, they probably won't get started until next year because I'm trying to finish all these other ones. But I really love it, and it screams summer to me. Um, and then my last one, my third one that I have finished, so I'm down to six now. Um, is this and this one I started a couple days after Christmas. This is um, with thy needle three tulips. As you can tell, I really like with thy needle. Um, and all of these, this this is white chocolate linen, and it was very starchy feeling, like just super stiff fabric. And I don't know, I don't know why or what brand even it is, but it was a little bit hard to get used to, and it didn't ever loosen up. Um, the color changes are Shepherd's Bush color changes. Um, the call for floss was a lot of brown, and um, I think that this is like aged pewter or something. It's like a gray black, and I wanted more spring colors. And when I saw this, I absolutely loved it. So uh, I feel like I can't really share the color conversions since they're not mine. But if you want them and you buy the pattern from them, it'll come with it. So. Anyway, I really like the way this turned out, and I am into simple finishing for my things because I, I just really like the stitch to be the focus of the piece. So, and I finished this in January, and I've had it up ever since because I'm tired of snow. Um, in Utah, we don't get snow days. Like, I've been watching last year and people saying, oh, it snowed an inch and so we got a snow day, but it snows enough here that they don't, nothing really happens. I mean, maybe they'll do a late start. Um, a couple of the schools were called off because um, 
in other in other areas it was that they were hanging on the news because it was the first time since the 90s so the chances of us having school called off or having a stay-at-home day in the snow are slim to none occasionally we do because of um wind so when my yeah let's see maybe maybe about seven or eight years ago we had this huge huge windstorm that did a lot of damage and school was called off because it was too dangerous to drive in it and then all the power went out Okay, the other, I've decided in my Stitch 9 challenge while I'm doing this, that I have a couple of little things that I want to get done. Um, so as I, I'm trying to finish two, then start a small one. So smalls are going to be my focus for the next little while. But this is Easter Peep, also by Brenda Gervais, and these are also the Shepherd's Bush color changes. Um, this blue is Mountain Mist. And I, again, don't know, they have a lot of, their samples, they have pre-cut fabric for it, just on whatever they did. So, um, and it's, uh, you know, the right size, ready to go. So that's what this is. Um, and I'm uh, hoping to finish this in the next day or two. Um, I'm usually, so, <laughs> I usually have a hard time with animals wearing clothes. I don't know what it is, but it kind of freaks me out. Um, but a bow, I could handle. So, and a little hat, I can I can handle that. Um, but, yeah, but this isn't my normal, like what I would choose to stitch normally, um, because the animal's wearing clothes. But this I could handle, so I decided to do it. Um, and then I will probably, my next thing to start when that's done is, of course, another with my needle and thread. And this one, and I've kind of been waiting. I have this all kitted and ready to go since last summer. Um, but if you look at the colors, here's the floss colors. Um, they kind of look fallish to me, although I do absolutely love this sea foam. This. Um, but they kind of they kind of look fallish. And when I've seen the finished one of people who finished this, it doesn't look like fall at all. But I know that Shepherd's Bush is working on what to have one, and I don't know if they started yet. Yet they were just kind of thinking about it before, so I was kind of waiting to see if they change the colors or not, and if I decide that I like those better. Um, but anyway, that's my next thing to start after I finish Easter Peep and one other. I can start that. Um, then last time I did a video, I was almost finished with this. Not quite. So this is Jack Bash by Plum Street. This is my first time doing one over one. And this is one that I'm going to have to get professionally framed because it's a not a standard framing size. But um, I absolutely love the finished piece. I worked on it for about a month solid and didn't work on other things, which is also why I have so many other Halloween and fall witch, was because this is, was my focus. But it is finished and I'm glad it's done. And I just love it. I've, been eyeing um, Merrily, Merrily, We Welcome Spring, and it, but it's so big, I've had to stop myself from buying it because I've got to get my other big things done before I start another big thing. My husband also gave me Plum Street in Friendship. I'm thinking, do I have it out for Christmas? And um, so I've got that kitted and ready to go, but that's another big one as well. Um, I also finished, this is by Lila Studio, um, and it's called Be Mine. And I changed a couple of the colors. It had a lot of brown, like the words were brown up here. And so I changed just a, a few little things like that. It also had a, a border around it, and I, I just decided not to do it. So anyway, a little Valentine one that you'd think I would have finished it, but I didn't. Um, then I finished this. This one was finished a while ago, but I didn't have it in a frame. And I, um, another thing that I got for Christmas was Spice Fiskers. And it's like, it's not a guillotine cutter. It has a slider, but it can slide through um, heavier, heavy duty things. So I had to cut this, this mat down to put it in. Um, I usually like my stitch things to not have the glass in them, but I can't get this out. I framed up myself and I can't, the, the glass is stuck into the frame. So anyway, 
this is uh, Brenda Gervais, uh, Berry Days at Thistle Down Farm, but I think that's a fun summary one. And again, I've got it out because I'm tired of snow. Okay, um, I also have Christmas stitches that I have finished, and one of them, I went to go pull these out, and I have my stitch stitching in a different place than my regular decorations. Um, and one of them I can't find, and it's the, I think it's called Mary Noel, or something like that. Uh, it says Noel by Brenda Gervais, but I can't find it. But this is pomegranate Santa, and I don't love this frame. One thing that I like about finishing myself is if I don't like it in the frame after a while, I can take it out and put it in a different frame very easily. Um, but this just fits a standard frame, but I kind of feel like the white washes it out a little bit. So I am on the lookout for another one. But this is pomegranate Santa. This is 36 count, and I have no idea what this fabric is. Um, it's kind of a, it's like a base, but it's got a, a little bit of a reddish tint to it um, in the modeling. So, and that's the color, called for colors with that one. Um, I also finished, I think this is called Snow for Christmas. This is also with my needles. And it, and just it. I get most of my frames at Home Goods, and that's where I think all of these are from. But um, they're usually only about ten dollars, and then I just do it myself. Um, anyway, so this is one that I did. I think this is actually what I abandoned the thankful, grateful, and blessed to start. Is this one? So, uh, let's see. And then I have been into making these little pillows. I really wasn't into pillows very much um, until I went to Shepherd's Bush in the fall, and they actually had the samples, like the samples that are on the pattern covers from, um, let's see, I think they have Eat Crow, one of the Crow ones, and uh, the Crone on the Hill by Plum Street, and they have them finished into a little pillow. Um, and I love it, and they have it, um, they have, it has walnut seeds in it, or not walnut seeds, walnut um, shell crushed in it. And so I, I decided to make some, for some things that were an odd shape that I couldn't find a, uh, frame for. So this is Bent Creek, um, I think it's called Thankful Quake, Quaker, and I finished this, um, back in the fall, and I couldn't find a square frame that was the right size. It needed like an 8x8 eight eight square frame and I didn't want to pay for framing. So anyway, I made it into this and I bought um, I bought the walnut shells at the pet store of Lizard Litter and it's just round walnut shells but I love the weight of the walnut shells. I think it feels, I just really like the, the feel of it. And I just used, I had um, a felted wool from some other projects left over. Um, I had big ideas at one point to make my daughter felt food. If you look on Etsy at the felt food, it's super cute. Um, and you can make it easily, and she got a little kitchen for Christmas, so I was gonna make her some food. And I made her this pizza, and it, like, it has the different topping stuffer that you can put on or whatever, and it got lost and like in two days, so I did never make her anymore, because I was like, why make it? It's it's just going to get lost. She was like three at the time. But anyway, so all of this is left over from things that I thought I was going to do with it and never did. Um, I did show a little bit. This is the one that is on the stand, or that the, is, the phone is resting on. This is Chessie and Me Winter Woods. And let's see. And so this is the first pillow that I made. I do wish that I would have stuck this better. I followed um, Whistle Stop Stitcher Jennifer. She had a, a tutorial on the with the walnut shells. So I followed her tutorial and um, did those and also to do the the Chanel trim. Um, sorry, I know I'm going really fast. I'm trying to hurry so that my husband can eat during his lunch break. Um, I forgot this was. Anyway, I had a lot more I was going to say, but like I said, I've done it three times, and so we're done. Um, so this last little thing is the February wordplay, and I didn't have any 
Destiny uh, Valentine's description. And so I thought this would be a great a great one. And again, it was kind of an odd size, so I decided to do the pillow. So I got this, um, this is just Rick Rack, and I used again the, the felted wool on the back, and yeah, so this is the finish with that. Um, that is about all I have. I've been stitching not quite as much lately. Um, we've, we've just been busy. I always thought that when my kids were a little bit older that we would be less busy, but we're more busy. And I don't know if it's because nobody drives yet. My oldest has his learning, but he can't drive drive without us in the car. Um, so I don't know if that's what it is because they're older, but it's definitely way more busy than before. And that's just with the oldest too. So there's still three more to come. Um, anyway, so if you have a favorite podcast, leave me a comment and let me know. Um, and yeah, it's good to be back.